Welcome to my Unity to Unreal series. We're here in the GameDAV cave, and in this first video, we're going to go over the most important things for a Unity developer to start with Unreal Engine. But before we begin, thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. We have Unreal Engine and we have Unity Engine, two game engines which both function in their own unique ways, and moving from one to the other can be a little bit intimidating, which I know a thing or two about. I started my game development journey years ago with Unreal Engine, and then at some point I decided to switch over to trying Unity Engine for a while. And after about a year or so of using Unity Engine for a variety of different reasons, I went back to using Unreal Engine again. So I've actually made this transition in both directions before. So that's what I want to talk about today. The differences between these two engines and how to deal with moving from one to the other. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk a lot more about the different aspects of moving from Unity to Unreal Engine as a professional game developer, looking to explore your different options with the different game engines. There's a bunch of differences ranging from very small to very, very important. So we're going to be focusing on the most important things today. That being the structure of the objects in your game world. You see, here in Unity, we have all of these game objects over on the left hand side. And if we go into one, let's say the player, for instance, that is made out of even more game objects. And these game objects only really differ from each other in one way. That is the components or the scripts that we have over here on the right hand side. In the inspector here, we can see on every single one of these game objects, we have a different set of components. They all have a transform, but this camera, of course, has a camera components. But then the player object itself has a player input handling script, a player character controller script, it has what is below it here, a health script, and so on and so forth. So all this functionality exists on these scripts that exist on these game objects. There's nothing inherently different about the camera game object compared to the player game object. Combining all these objects together creates a prefab a collection of different game objects that can be handled as one big game object. When you're first coming over to Unreal Engine and you open this up, you might think, oh, but that's what blueprints are. Blueprints are just prefabs. And while there is a lot of similarity between the two of them, that being it is a collection of different components that you can put into the world as one thing, there's one very important distinction between the two of them. A blueprint in and of itself is also a object oriented class meaning that a blueprint can inherently because it is a certain type of blueprint have code on it and that is what we see here in the event graph in blueprint of course you can also add this code through c instead a blueprint kind of combines both the composition that you see in unity with adding scripts to a game object and a more hierarchical structure where classes inherit from other classes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. As you can see here in the top left corner, we do still have components. This is the character class itself. This is the BP first person character class, but that then contains a capsule component for the collision and a arrow component, just a developer tool to show what direction a certain character is facing. It has a character mesh. It has a camera component and another mesh again. And then it also has a character movement component, which deals with moving the character about in the world. For the most part, all of these you can also put into different actors. So they function similarly to how you would have a script as a component in Unity. Well, then in this case, you can see all of the input related stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, because that is also important to cover is dealt with on the class itself. We don't have a component here that deals with our inputs and that then forwards that to the character movement instead. What we do have is just directly have that on our character class and that opens up some really interesting opportunities. But for that, I think we should talk about the 
character controller to really understand why that is so relevant in this case. Because here in Unity, if we go back into our player, you can see that all the input stuff and all the character controller stuff are scripts that exist on the game object for the player itself. And while you can do pretty much the same thing in Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine provides you with a pre-made class, a little bit more of a framework to work with for a character controller class. So what we can do, if you have any of the default template projects, this is the first person shooter template project, you will see that it comes with a default character blueprint, but also a game mode blueprint, which we will talk about in a moment as well, and a first person character controller. And this character controller just sets up our mapping context. And a mapping context, real quick, is just a list of, hey, I want to have input actions, which these input actions are assets in and of themselves as well. So we have the input action jump. We can set a couple of settings there. That's not the most relevant thing for right now. And to go along with that action, we have the buttons that trigger that action. And that we can set up in our character controller. And then whatever our character controller is controlling is going to be the thing implementing how it should respond to that. Which is why we have these input action events in our event graph for the DP first person character itself. Because if we then make something entirely different, let's say we have, we copy this one over, like we duplicate it and we call this BP a first person horizontal character, something like that, right? This one will take those inputs and do something entirely different with them. So instead of using the mouse to look left and right and up and down, he can only uh, look left and right for instance, and the up and down we will use for moving uh, forward and backward. This is obviously not going to be a very intuitive way uh, to play a game, but just to prove a point as to like how you can set up these different things to behave differently through these inputs, uh, this is something that we can do. So we can get rid of the rest of this movement inputs and then we can keep the jump, I suppose. And now we have two distinctly different blueprints that have slightly different code. We didn't make a different script for it. We didn't make a different component that differentiates these two. These are two distinctly differently functioning classes now. So if we start playing the game, uh, you will note that everything is fairly normal because I'm playing as the normal third person character. But that is where the game mode comes in, right? So if we have the game mode here, the game mode can contain some code as well. You can open it in the full blueprint editor, as you can see up here. Pressing this will allow you to start adding some code to this as well. You just get the normal event graph. And if you want to go back to seeing that view from just now, that's just over on the right hand side now. And here we can set up what our player controller class is. So we can have multiple different player controller classes that maybe set up different input mappings or have different other types of functions. But more importantly, for what I'm trying to show right now, we can set a default pawn class. And that is the default class that the player is going to spawn in as. So we have our BP first person character, but I also make the BP first person horizontal. And now if we change to that, this is the game mode that the project is set to as default. We will see that if I now try to move up with my mouse, I start moving instead of looking around. I cannot actually look up and down. So we have the same controller controlling a different character, which makes it behave differently. And you might think, why is this relevant? And that is because you can very easily change between what character your character is controlling during your gameplay, making for some very fun and interesting mechanics. So let's say that we have this first person horizontal character right over here. And back in our game mode, I'm going to set myself back to using the first person character because that one controls a little bit more intuitively. And we also have this rifle set up as part of this template. And this rifle will shoot a bullet. And when this bullet hits something, we can program it to do pretty much anything we want. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the other, so the thing that was hit, and we're going to be casting that to the character. And we'll talk a little bit about the basic hierarchy of the characters that we have in Unreal in a moment. Uh, and if that cast is successful, we know that whatever we hit is a character or something that inherits from character. And if we then get the player controller, which is something that we can easily get from pretty much any blueprint in the game, 
It's just a function that gets you a reference to the player controller. We can tell it to possess something new. So it has a function here called possess, and we can put in anything that is a pawn or inherit from pawn. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. And now, whatever we shoot, if it is a character, we're going to possess it, meaning that we can change what character we're playing as on the fly. And just to make this a little bit more visually distinctive as to what we want to hit, uh, we are going to be adding just a cylinder in here, which again, you can add these components as just a static mesh to your blueprints, just as you would be used to doing in a prefab. And it automatically updates in the world, as you can see, because it is just that blueprint that is getting instanced. Now we can see if we pick up this rifle and we shoot at this cylinder over here, suddenly we are the cylinder. Isn't that just amazing? And we can walk around and look around just like we set up. And of course, I don't have a gun to now repossess uh, the other player character that we uh, were just playing as. But this is how you can very easily move between different controllable characters. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about here is the character and pawn and actor hierarchy. Because again, we have these different classes and different classifications for different things that go beyond just everything being a game object. And that is relevant to talk about. So when we make a new blueprint class or a new C++ class, we can choose what the parent class will be. And if you're somewhat familiar with object-oriented programming, you should be kind of familiar with what that means. But we have an actor, a pawn and a character. This is the basic hierarchy that Unreal Engine provides you with and that you can build upon. Everything that has to exist in the world is an actor. Every static mesh that exists in the world, every bullet that you spawn in that is physically there and not just a line trace is an actor. Every particle system that you spawn in exists within an actor. This is just the equivalent to a game object, more or less. It has a couple of functions like get player location and get the rotation, all that kind of transform stuff. It has the basic things that it needs to be able to exist in the game world. Then we have a pawn. And a pawn is nothing much more than an actor that is possessable. The thing that we just did with possessing the other character, it needs to be at least inherited from pawn, which pawn inherits from actor itself, right? So pawn comes from actor. Anything that is a pawn, or below will be able to be possessed by a player controller and you can do that jumping around that we just did then we have the character and the character is a child class of the pawn it inherits from the pawn and as such of course it then also inherits from everything that actor has and this is just a more specialized pawn that is pre-set up for you which will be good for you to use in most cases when you're just working with a normal humanoid type character it has the character movement component pre-made for you, and it has a bunch of options on how fast things should move. It has swimming and crouching and all that kind of stuff pre-implemented for you. And then, of course, anything that branches off of either the pawn or the character can also, in the same way, be possessed by a player controller. The only thing that cannot be possessed by a player controller is anything that directly inherits from actor. So anything branching off like this cannot be possessed by a player controller. Then, of course, we have player controllers, which you can make your own custom player controller classes with like more code than just doing an input action mapping, which is the very most basic thing that a player controller can do. A game mode, if you're used to working in Unity, you probably have a whole bunch of manager-related objects that have a whole bunch of scripts on it that deal with managing information between different game objects. The game mode is kind of like Unreal's pre-build version of that. And much like we could do a moment ago, getting the player controller very easily, there's also a very easily get game mode node here, from which you can access any variables or any functions that you've created that exist the game mode as a manager object. Those are some of the more important structural differences between how Unity functions and how Unreal Engine functions. Again, the main difference comes down to a difference between composition-based architectures and inheritance-based architectures, but luckily Unreal Engine still has this composition-based system implemented as well. So if you are much more familiar with just working with composition, only having a bunch of components or scripts 
on an object and that being the only really differentiating thing, you can kind of still do that. But I do encourage you to give it a try and see how working with these actual like different classes will impact you. So go ahead and try out this structure in Unreal Engine with these class inheritance because it is really, really good to get used to. If you are interested in switching to Unreal Engine, check out the website linked down below in the description for more. They've also got more detailed documentation about things like the actor structure and hierarchy. So make sure to check that out if you're ready to jump in. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 